So how long ago was it that you uh, sort of abandoned your faith? Well, I mean, it was, a, it was a long process. I mean, about 20 years total, but I would say that... Um, I would say probably in the past two years where I've felt comfortable calling myself an atheist. Right. Two? Two years. Oh, that's pretty recent. Yeah, it is. I think one of the things that I'm starting to feel as I sort of enter into this experience is a sense of like um, loneliness at the kind of prospect that God's not there or like the sense of loss or absence. Did you have that kind of thing? For the most part, I didn't. Uh -huh. um, although I do have to say, probably um, about a year, year and a half ago, I, I did find myself in a pretty down place. Um, hmm. and, and, and I did reach a point where I really wanted to believe. Like, I really wanted to believe that there was something there, or at least go back to what I used to believe you know, and be able to rely on something or someone for comfort. Um, and I, I really did want to believe that, but yet, you know, dealing with that and really kind of accepting what I did believe, it, it was tough. Yeah. It was tough. I mean, I can see, I mean, people rely on their faith for comfort. I mean, and that's a huge, huge real thing. Right. So how did you, I mean, were you raised in a naturalistic home or where that was the framework? Or how did you come to atheism? I was raised, I, was, I had a very fundamentalist childhood. So the opposite of naturalistic, yes. I was, uh, <laughs> and it wasn't forced upon me. I, although I grew up in a Christian home, right. it, it really wasn't a dogmatic, huh. fundamentalist home from a... Uh, very early age, I uh, really kind of picked up the ball and ran with it. Huh. it. And for most of my growing up, I mean, it was a huge part of my life. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I was in church three or four times a week. Um, it was a independent Baptist church, a huh. lot of time studying the scriptures. Yeah. And again, a lot of time, you know, just in, uh, in prayer, really. Uh -huh. um, my, my goal was to become a pastor or wow. uh, go off to Bible college and be a, a missionary. Yeah. That's really where I thought my calling was. Outside the U.S. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And um, huh. it was very real. It, it was very real for me in, uh, in, in every way possible. Yeah. And it was a... Uh, it was a long process to get from there to here. Right. It really wasn't an overnight decision. It, it was a lot of little things that I started uh, questioning. Right. And then more things that I started to, I guess, experiment with, more uh, liberal type Christian denominations, uh, mm -hmm. the Buddhism. To, Which could be atheistic religion, right? Mm, kind of, yes. Um, you know, to New Age and the Universe type stuff. Right. And. I would say that all took about 20 years of wow. just gradual things. Mm -hmm. and, and none of it was easy. I, mm -hmm. uh, I'm also gay and came out at a relatively early age. And it was difficult. It, it, was, not, it was not easy coming out. Because that wouldn't have been compatible with your religious upbringing. You know, it wasn't, but I really don't tie the two together. Really? As, I, I really don't. Huh. Um, but I do have to say, although coming out as gay was no picnic, <laughs> coming out as an atheist was way harder for me. Really? For me. Because huh. it was so real for me. What it, was? Uh, uh, my faith. Oh, my right. My faith, it, it was my life. It, it was, was even deeper I've... than your sexual identity. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And, and again, why I think it took so long, but it was... I think that's why the analogy works. Difficult. The analogy between coming out of the closet as a as a gay person and coming out of the closet as an atheist person there is an analogy because they are deeply like absolutely and, and the, it, it, there's so much the same as huh. far as wow. you know being true to yourself and then having to tell other people with the risk of 
the rejection. Right. And, you know, you really feel in both in instances like you'll lose everything and everyone. Right. And did you? No. It right. didn't work out that way. No. In, either, in either case. No. But, but regardless, you have, everyone goes through those fears. Right. I you mean, you, and, you and, take a worst case scenario. Like most fears, they're ungrounded. Right. Although, although there are those who do lose their family and friends for coming out as either gay or atheist. Right. But for me, that was not the case. But, but personally, it, it was, it was gut wrenching for me. So you were saying before about ritual, we were talking about, for example, like Unitarian Universalists and how so many of them are atheists, but they go to church. Right. So why would they go to church? Like why, if you empty Something. the rituals out of, the meaning out of the rituals, then what is... Right, well, I think, well, I think all things are really relative to where you are. And that it doesn't have to have some big universal meaning. Okay. I, I think you as an individual can give... Put meaning any, into it, Anything yeah. meaning. Okay. And, and if going to a church or a building or listening to a particular type of music, uh huh. I think if if you ascribe meaning to it, it, it it doesn't mean you're buying into the 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 overarching religious aspect of it. Okay. See, when I hear that, when I hear that music, I feel my being reach out after something bigger than me. Maybe because just that's the way it's programmed for me. Or that's where you are now. Or. Yeah, and what if there's nothing there? And I guess that's the question I'm asking. And you're asking. so used to that that elicits that type, the hands-up response. Right. I mean, I, I guess I'm at the word I, something like that, I, it puts me more introspective, reaching in for something. Oh, that's than, interesting. Than out. Yeah, that makes sense. Especially if you don't think there is anything out, then why would you reach right. for that? Right. And again, I, you know, it's all relative to where you are. I really believe that. And I, you know, so to some, someone that didn't grow up in the church, that could be meaningless to them. Right, or meaningful for a different, different reason. Different reason that means nothing to me or you. Right. Gosh, and that's think, amazing. You know, some atheists get so caught up in that type of stuff right. you know, where you can't even say, like, God bless you without it being a religious, you know, I know people have, people have joked with me, like, is it okay if I pray for you? Or can well, right. I, God bless you, can I say that? And I'm like, you say whatever you want to say. But even, you know, again, some atheists get so militant about that stuff. Right, you know, I see. You can't say, you know, Chris, you know Merry celebrate Christmas. Christmas because it's, you know, Christian holiday. It's crazy, Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's a cultural holiday, you know, people. It it's whatever it is to you. It's whatever yeah. it is to you, yes. yeah. I mean, yeah. I still listen to Christian music at times. Really? I like do, what? I and I enjoy it. Mm. <laughs> um, it's okay, you don't have to tell no, me. No, I, I, I like some Keith Green, some Amy Grant. Wow. Yeah, because it brings you back to a place Gregorian where... Gregorian chants this morning, actually. Wow, yeah. that's great. I... Yes, I, I like it. And it does, it's more, it's, it's, mem it's, it's memories. It's like smelling cookies in the oven, and it takes you back yeah. to when your mother was making them. I mean, it, it's that type of thing for me. I think Amy Grant would, like, give me the shakes or something. I'd be like, <laughs> that wasn't a good memory for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad it works for you. It did work for me. <laughs> it, Epic fan. My first album was Amy Grant. <laughs> wow. Yes. I was trying to get away from Amy Grant at that age. I was going. I to... was running towards it, I'm telling you. That's amazing.